Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. We're going to do a quick intro um, how to run a test in VS Code. So in a few videos time, we'll be looking at how to run the, um, the test for the VS um, Test Explorer. To begin with, we're going to have a quick look how to run it with the, um, the .NET CLI. So here in my, in my project, I've got my um, unit test and folder here. And in that project, we've got the, um, the echo test, this one here. So this, this is the testing you can see in code. So what this test does, it, um, it spins up the uh, function runtime, loads our logic app workflow files in it, and then it allows us to execute that logic app. Now to run the test, if you don't, I've, I've just um, sort of set the directory to be the unit test directory. And then if I want to run a one-off individual test, I can use this command here. So I'm um, specifying a filter, which allows me to choose what tests to run. So in this case, I'm going to use the fully qualified name filter to point to this uh, this one test on its own. And then I've just set the logger so it'll it'll give me some log output. Um, I'll be able to you know modify those various settings if I wanted to have um, a different filter or you know different more verbose logging or something like that. Um, you can see here if I just run that now, you'll see it just builds the project, and then it'll find that one test that matched. And that test is going to be spinning up the function runtime, and you can see that that was successful. We executed our green path there. Now there are other options with that command line so one of the other things you might want to do is um, if you notice on the, the test method here i've got some priorities and some categories so i've got a test category there so what i could do is i could run a um, <clears throat> command here <coughs> with a filter for the unit test category now that would basically go and run all tests that it finds that have that category on it so it should run the same test again but that could be a way you could choose to run a bunch of tests that just meet certain criteria so maybe you, you tag all of the tests that run against an individual logic app or something um, or an individual workflow to get my terminology right and then you could just say workflow one run all the tests for that with just one command that might make your life a bit easier um, the priority so i could give that a chance to finish that test i could um run the same command with a filter on the priority which would be just very slightly different so i'll just pop notepad up while we're waiting for that so it would just be this <clears throat> this command here with a filter using proper priority equals one and then that would pick up um priority one tests instead of using the test category so there's a couple of different ways you can you can run that um command so i think the next thing we want to do is um if we have a look we'll just give that test a few seconds to finish um we'll have a look at how to run all of the tests So that, that ran all of our tests that are marked as unit tests. Now, this time I want to run um, all tests that it finds within this directory. So note I'm in the unit test directory. If I went up a directory, it would run all the tests in the acceptance tests and the unit tests one. But I can run it with, um, so I've got the logger specified as console and the verbosity as normal. Now, if you just note how the difference here where it gives me quite a limited amount of output here so it just tells me how many tests ran and the results but this time it's going to actually list the individual tests so you can see one passed this one failed and it gives me the assertion that failed and, and a bit of output here and we'll let that just run through and do the rest of them and you'll see it'll bring up um, a list of all the individual tests that's quite a common command you would run um, just to have a good a good output output on which tests passed and which failed.
there we can see the, the output. We've got the list of which tests passed and failed and the results here. So that's quite an easy way to, to do that now. The last thing I want to show is um, just if you change the verbosity level, um, you'll get a lot more detailed output from the tests. So especially happen on the ones that where it runs the workflows. So you can see here this output from that um, that test there is telling you um, some of the console events from the workflow runtime being spat up. So it uh, span up. So it's loaded these files in, um, and then it's kind of just checking the directory. It tells you where the output for it is. So when we um, when we run the workflows, we we basically copy them into a temp folder that allows us to spin the run uh, the function runtime up, pointing to that folder, so we can control exactly which workflows get loaded. Which will give you a lot of flexibility if you want to run different scenarios where you might manipulate the, the settings and stuff. You can see here you get quite a bit of output from the um, from the like the function runtime and stuff as well so you get a lot more details the key thing with that that verbose um level set of detailed okay um thanks for listening to that video